What you can see here is a SAD Tandy. A SAD Tandy 1000SX to be exact. This computer is SAD because while it was in storage for the last couple of years, its hard drive failed. Also, the indignity of being raided for parts, in this case the 360k floppy drive, occurred. As well, there's some poorly executed mods to the power supply I did when I was a kid that need to be redone. And finally, most of the screws are missing from this poor thing. I disassembled the Tandy about once a month back in the day, and every time I put it back together, I seem to be missing one or two screws. And now, to be honest, there's not many left. This computer was not my first machine, but is probably the most influential in starting me on a career in software development. If you've watched my other videos, you probably know that I first learned to program on a Radio Shack color computer. But all that work was done in BASIC, and BASIC was never really a commercially viable language, even in the mid-80s. However, on the Tandy 1000, I toyed with GW BASIC a bit when my parents first purchased the machine, but what really I got into was Turbo Pascal, and that's where I honed my skills as a programmer. For those of you who've never used it, Turbo Pascal was a great language. It was clean, it was understandable, and it was useful, and it compiled into fast executables. The hundreds of hours that I spent hacking in that language easily carried over to my eventual work in C, which was actually something I could make a living at. In some ways, I feel I owe this computer a debt of gratitude, so please join me today while I make this Tandy 1000 a little less sad. I picked up this monitor recently for the Tandy 1000, and not only does it work, it actually has this little door here which typically falls off on these things. They break and they go missing and so when you see these online so many of them are missing the little door. And in fact uh, the monitor that we had in our house at some point I broke the door off and lost it and it was missing for the longest time. So I'm happy about that. There's a little corner piece missing here from the case. It snapped at some point I saved that piece of plastic. I put it somewhere safe. I just don't know where that safe place is, but I know I've got it around here somewhere. If I find it, I'll glue it back in on the video. Otherwise, I'll just leave that as a project for another day. Obviously, the floppy drive is missing, so it should be right here. When we got this computer, it actually had two floppy drives. Uh, on the 1000SX, they were white face drives. I'm going to replace these with black floppy drives because I can't find any of the white drives around. So I'll put a couple black drives. It'll look like an old 1000 as opposed to a 1000SX. But um, yeah, it'll look nice. The hard drive is dead, or at least I think it is. Could be the controller, could be something else. But I'm going to remove that because I've got a CF card hard drive emulator that I'm going to put in instead, which should make this machine more reliable and it'll use less power. So probably a good thing. The keyboard's in good shape, everything works. The only thing about it is that it is missing the six key, which broke off when I tried to remove the keycaps uh, to clean the keyboard out when I was like 14. Uh, it broke, I lost it, and it's been gone for years and years and years. I'm not actually sure how to remove the keycaps on this keyboard. I did a quick Google search and didn't see any authoritative answer to this question. So if you know how to replace a keycap in a Tandy 1000 or Tandy 2000 keyboard, um, let me know. I'd like to know. I'd like to pull these apart one day. The last thing is the screws on the front of the case are missing. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I really pulled the screws out of this thing and I would lose one every time I did so. And these ones have been gone for years and years and years, probably 30 plus years, 33 years. What year is it now? It's been a very long time since those actually had screws in them. So I'm gonna replace those and get this case all sealed up like it should be. Well, let's try and power this thing up. So the monitor comes on fine power. You can hear that nice sound of the hard drive. 
and we get a nasty clicking noise, which is not a good thing. It's not supposed to do that. Um, on the screen it says memory size 640K. We get the copyright uh, 1988 Seagate, so the controller's being recognized. But yeah, something's wrong. It's not good at all. Here I've got something really special. This is an original Tandy 1000 SX technical reference manual. It's uh, complete with the casing. It's got a nice sort of fabric coat on it. The bookshelf. And inside we have the manual. Now this is doubly special because this was actually a gift from my dad. Um, and I've never really had much use for it because I got it, you know, probably near the end of the Tandy 1000 SX era. Um, he got it, I think it was on clearance when he got it. Um, but uh, yeah, I've not had much use for it. But today, 30 years later, it's going to be extremely useful because on page three or four, we have a list of all of the screws, well, all the hardware that is used in this computer. So we can see here, you know, we need uh, for the chassis screw number 440s, number 632s, quarter inch long, 632s, 516s, a bunch of different ones. So this is really good because actually I've gone and looked for screws in the past and I never thought to look in the technical reference manual and I would get, you know, metric screws or whatever and they were never the right size. So I looked at the list and I went to my local hardware store and I picked up a bunch of hardware and I think I got everything I need. This is going to make uh, the old Tandy 1000 a lot happier. I've moved the machine to the workbench so I can get it ready for cleaning. So I'm going to pull this thing apart, pull the keyboard off, and slide the case off. Since there's no screws, it makes that job really easy. And I'm going to put that aside. It's a little dirty inside. At the back here, there's a plastic panel that I will remove. And this one actually has screws in it, which is pretty exciting stuff. Let's pop these out. I'm actually shocked they're screws. Obviously there's nothing good behind this panel because I would have taken these out and lost them many years ago. Okay, oh, one more. The Tandy was a little bit interesting in that it didn't have a serial port, but it had a light pen port. So one of these is a light pen, this one right here. The light pen port is totally useless, but I think Tandy thought that might be a great thing to have in the educational market or something. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if I saw a light pen in any of the Radio Shack stores back in the day. Who knows if they even shipped. Our plastic backing is removed. And we just have the computer frame itself. I'm going to vacuum this out, clean it a little bit. Not too much going on there. Um, in the computer, it's, it's a bit dirty. And I mentioned how I'd removed all the screws. So, you know, another thing that has no screws is the whole assembly for the floppy drive or the hard drive or combination thereof. So that I'm going to clean up and my messy fix or so-called fix 
a bodge, one might call it, depending on where one is from, is this extension cable I created for power. I gotta be honest with you, I don't know why I did this. It was over 30 years ago. Only half of the Molex plug is connected, so that doesn't make any sense. And it's just been really badly connected up here with, uh, you know, masking tape, not even electrical tape. So it's scary. What I'll probably do is I will fix this connector and I'll replace one of these connectors here with this longer wired connector. Other than that, just need some vacuuming. It's missing a screw on the speaker here. Need some floppy drives and we're good to go. Before I clean this thing up, I'm gonna show you what I found out about this poor hard drive. Um, in fact, I'm gonna pull the hard drive right now from this frame. And we can take a look at it. Okay, here's the ST250R hard drive. Now I'm gonna make sure it doesn't short out. Just kind of set it aside. Well, I'm gonna pop power into it and then I'll set it aside. Maybe I'll pop it on top of the power supply there. I'll plug in the computer. Somehow. Done. Oh, power switch was on. And you hear that ticking noise. So it's still doing the ticking. But I noticed one thing that it actually, I thought it might have been the controller, but I've pulled the cables from this thing, powered it up, and it's going to do the same thing. There it goes. So it sounds like the hard drive is trying to get to like track negative one or something like that. So the, the sensors for the hard drive heads are shot in some way and it's, you know, trying to go to an invalid track. Not sure exactly, but I'm going to keep this. I'm going to remove it from this, this computer. I'll replace it, but um, it's definitely shot. I've decided that I'm going to pull this frame apart and I'll pull the motherboard off of it and I will clean the frame as well. Cool thing on this computer is that it has a really rare accessory. This is a 286 Express board. And the 286 Express board uh, has a, a 80286 processor on it and it replaces your 8088 with a 80286. So this was a really cool option to have back in the day. And it made this computer, well, it gave it a lot more life, I'll tell you that much. And, and that was something that, you know, they weren't super popular, but they were out there, these sorts of um, 286 and I think even 386 boards for old 8088 machines. So, I don't know, that was great to have that. Good for playing games, right? You know, you need that extra processing power. I also want to pull this power supply off because it's really dirty and I want to get inside there and just kind of vacuum it out. So since I'm going to do that anyways, I might as well pull the main board out of the frame and I can clean the frame properly that way. So power supply and let's see if we can get this connector out here. Power supply is out. Pop that aside. And I'm gonna leave the 286 Express board connected up. We just have four screws, four, six screws. Holding the board to the frame. Okay. And 
Now, be free, my little friend. There we go. A Tandy 1000 motherboard extracted from the case. I'm going to put that aside as well. We just have this frame. Uh, because of the slightly unique way I'm going to wash this, I'm going to pull this speaker off as well. And unfortunately, like I said, for some reason, I pulled one of these screws out of the speaker. Like, why would I even do that? I don't know. Sometimes when you're a kid, you do strange things. Okay, speaker's out. Paper. I don't want to take that out. It doesn't get wrecked. So, there's the frame. There's a little piece of, piece of metal. We've got our backing plate here. We've got... and all this stuff can be cleaned as well as uh, the keyboard here so how are we going to clean them well you'll see in the next clip cleaned up nicely here um, keyboards nice and clean so some water dripping out of it still but I'll let it sit for a few days the case is good looks good and yeah everything's fine and the bottom of the keyboard didn't melt and the uh, little bits of uh, cork are fine so I'm pretty happy now it's time to pop the motherboard back in the frame. Get those ones in. I'll get this card all popped in. And we'll turn this around so you can see what I'm working on. This little screw was tough to find at the back here because it was just covered in dust. I went over the board with uh, a detailing brush from like car de detailing. And I used a vacuum cleaner to vacuum sort of the loose dirt once I freed it up and there we go something just fell off camera nothing to panic about nothing to see here okay let's get the next one in Where'd that speaker go? That's part of what fell. Okay. Now we'll get the speaker reattached. There were only three screws holding this in. And I don't have a good replacement for these screws. So I'm gonna leave it at three. It's just the way it is. Isn't pretty, but we're gonna have to live with it.
that. There we go. Wow. It's been a long time since all the slots have been covered. There's going to be two cards in here. I got an RS-232 card and I've got a CF hard drive emulator. So it'll fill up those slots. And in fact, why don't I put in the uh, hard drive emulator right now? Here's the drive emulator. I picked this up off of eBay from Blue Lava Systems. Yes, I paid full price. They didn't uh, sponsor me or anything. Um, it's pretty cool. It's just a basically a CF card here. And that's your, your hard drive. This one also has an IDE port on it. So if I really wanted a spinning magnetic disc, I could pop that in there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. So I'm gonna pop that in this slot here. Uh, actually, before I do that, there's one thing I, I looked at this uh, earlier and I you know, wanted to check out the instructions. And I was wondering, like there's no instructions in the box, but what's really cool, the instructions are actually silk screened on the back. I've never seen that before, but I thought that's an awesome idea. I really like that. So uh, maybe one day I'll steal that for one of my own projects. Okay, so there, pop that in that slot there. I don't think it matters what slot it's in on a Tandy 1000. I may be wrong. And if I am wrong, I will just uh, swap them. I think the uh, 286 Express card pretty much needs to go in the slot that it's in just because of the length of the cable. Okay, there we go. We now have a virtual hard drive. The last card that I have uh, to put in here is a serial port parallel port combo card. It's got a bunch of jumpers. I think the parallel port has been disabled on this. It's going to be a real challenge to find out what those jumpers do if it hasn't, but um, yeah, let's pop it in. We'll see what we get. And actually, it looks like it's actually got two serial ports on it. And I have a little um, serial port like cover plate. It might be fun to connect that up at some point in the future, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Next thing I got to do is clean up this power supply and fix this crazy hack. In fact, I'm not sure that even qualifies as a hack. That might just be garbage. Just want to see what I'm dealing with here. It's been a long time since I did this repair. So I don't even know how I connected these wires, if they're soldered, if they're not. Who knows? That will really determine to some degree how I fix this. Oh yeah, that's incredibly gooey masking tape. Oh, what a mess. Oh, what do we got? I can see some wire right there. <laughs> it's not looking good. I don't think I even soldered these. Maybe it is looking good. So I don't want to deal with... Oh no, it's soldered. Look at that. 14 year old me, good work. At least you soldered it. And here, hope it's gonna be long enough because I'm actually gonna be shortening these just a tiny bit. Handy dandy wire strippers. I should probably get some proper wire strippers. This one's going to have to do. Okay. There we go. And 
do my best to physically tie those together. Okay. And then let's melt some solder. And that's about it. I'll just get the rest of those done and I'll be back in a bit. Well, it's off to the garage, to the literal junk pile. I got this old 486 here. There is a TAC drive of some sort with a DOS 3.1 disc in it. So I'm going to pull that out. There's a old MFM drive. Don't know if that's useful or not. I don't know if this drive is going to be 360K or 1.2 meg. Hopefully it's 360K, but it doesn't matter that much. And I've got this old Sony, which is a Pentium. And at one point, I tried to use it to get some files off of somewhere. And it's got a uh, drive, and it's the same kind of drive. So hopefully they're 360K drives. If not, they'll look good in the machine and they'll read 360k discs, they just won't write them very well. Here's the floppy drives that I managed to recover from those two computers. Um, both are in okay shape. This one's actually got a little bit of rust on it. You can kind of see there. Uh, it was pretty dusty, but I cleaned it up as much as I could. Oh, it looks like there's a leaf stuck in there, and there's an old copy of DOS 3.1 and I can guarantee you this floppy doesn't work because it's really dusty. I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. The drives themselves are both TAC drives and this one is a FD55BV and that's really good news because this is a 360k drive which is what I want and this one here is an FD55GFR. This is a 1.2 megabyte drive, which I wouldn't want to use as my primary disk drive on a Tandy 1000, but it will be fine as a secondary drive. A 1.2 megabyte drive will read 360K floppies fine, or at least it's supposed to. To be honest with you, I, I don't really know. I've never really done it, but um, this drive is supposed to be able to read 360K floppies but writing to 360k floppies can be a problem. So I will rely on this drive as my primary drive, which will let me read and write. I'm going to need to clean the heads on these. They're very dirty. Uh, but uh, I don't have to do that right now. I could get that installed in the machine. As I mentioned earlier, the Tandy 1000 SX had white drives. These are black. But uh, the original Tandy 1000 had black drives. So my 1000 SX will look like a 1000, but uh, that's fine. I think this will work out perfectly. The drives go in this metal thingy. And this thing then is mounted here. So let's get to our primary drive. in there and hopefully the mounting holes line up and they appear to there's a couple options uh, try that one first and hopefully that's the correct one and I do have the correct screws for this if I hope I do the correct thread of screws 
using those crazy square head tips, but uh oh, that is not the right one. Okay. Let's see. There we go. So the bottom hole it fits. Okay. And then I'm going to see if that is correct or not. Well, it's totally backwards. So that's not correct at all, is it? One thing I didn't notice, these two screw holes are different sizes. So let's just hope the correct one lines up and it does not line up. So we have a little bit of a problem. Is this upside down? Nope, it is not upside down. Oh, you know what? I've got some smaller screws yet. Okay, both drives are in the frame and frame just goes like that onto the, the case, but I gotta get the power supply in first. So I'm gonna pop that in right now. And it just sits there. Tighten those up. Oh, you know what? I think I did that wrong. Here, we got that one is in the wrong spot. And there we go. So now just get that back plate on, which kind of half snaps on and it's secured with screws. This phase of the project will be complete. There we go. I think I'm gonna call that done. Perfect. That is what they call a 10 foot paint job. Looks good from about 10 feet away. Okay, well, let's see if this thing works. It has booted up using the XT IDE drive. I'll just hit enter for the date. This is looking really good. And I'm going to Use Procom and then actually I'll just run Procom, that's fine. Procom. It's firing up, which is good. And there we go, it loaded. So I've actually connected up my Coco, which is running OS 9 and we'll do a little remote session. There we go. Perfect, it worked. And I can go LS, and I get my directory listing. Now I'm not sure if this is morally wrong to use a Tandy 1000 as a dumb terminal to access a Coco, which is running OS 9, but hey, 
it's my lab, I'm allowed to do what I want. What do you guys think? Should I be using the Tandy 1000 for something more dignified than as a poor little dumb terminal connecting to a Coco? Who knows? If you have any great ideas, let me know what I should be doing with it. Well, it's not perfect, but the Tandy has gone from being a total disaster to being a usable machine. With the CF card hard drive emulator, it should be a pretty reliable retro computer that I can make use of on a regular basis. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed getting this machine back in working order. I've got a long list of ideas, so I'm hoping to get a video out every couple of weeks going forward. Last video, I introduced my Patreon site at patreon.com slash retrologiclab. I was so happy to get a couple of subscribers so far. Thanks Giacomo and Canatech for your support. This was a major inspiration for me and really got me motivated. If you enjoy this blend of retro computing and electronics with a bit of a Tandy slash HP bias, it would mean a tremendous amount to me if you would consider sponsoring me on Patreon. I realize we are in a difficult time here, so if you're not ready to sponsor me, I'd be thrilled if you would consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching and ciao until next time.